Sweet. We did it. We did it. There used to be a way to stick it to the man. It was called rock and roll. Guess what? Oh, no. The man ruined that, too, with a little thing called MTV. Don't talk to me about rock and roll. I'm not there in the clubs and on the streets, and I'm living it. I am rock and roll. Did I listen to pop music because I was miserable? Or was I miserable because I listened to pop music? All right. Well, <laughs> this is – um. I'm, I, I think I – well – no one's a no one's a long time listener with music to my peers because it hasn't been going that long. But you've been around for a little bit listening, and uh, I'm going to introduce you as like my my internet bestie because <laughs> I've never met, I've never met you in person, but we chat quite a bit over Facebook over uh, different music and whatever. Uh, but yeah, Aaron, yeah, Aaron, uh, welcome to the show. Um, this is this is fun. We've been trying to do this for a little while. Uh, I know we've kind of thrown thro- thrown around different albums to cover, and this one yeah. works really well. So you're here now. We're doing this, and we're going to cover Alkaline Trio. How sweet is that? Awesome! Yeah, stoked for it. Can't wait. Yeah. So are you, um, I guess a, a little bit of background on you. Uh, you're you're a drummer. You used to play in a band called Means, which that's the connection because uh, I had Todd, who used to play bass in Means, on the show a little while ago. Obviously, you guys are buds. He shared yeah. the show with you. That's how you got here. Um, so we're, we're slowly working on a, a Means reunion via the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's do it. So are you, are, yeah, are, you, are you playing in any bands these days or just kind of living life? Yeah, no, I'm not playing with anyone. I I just do lots of writing and recording, kind of on my own. Oh, that's cool. About lit, still, yeah. still kind of same style as Means was, and right I on. play guitar and bass as well. So kind right of on. keeps the creative juices flowing, and so there you kind go. of gives me an outlet to do that. There you go. So as far as Alkaline Trio is concerned, obviously we're talking about their uh, new album just came out a couple days ago. Is this thing cursed? Uh, it's their ninth studio album. So were you an Alkaline? Oh. Yeah, are you an Alkaline Trio fan from back in the day? Uh, you know what, not, I wouldn't say that. They were always kind of one of those bands that when they came on, I would enjoy listening to it, but none of their albums really kind of had a big enough pull to kind of draw me back. Right. I think the last, the last album I bought was, of theirs was, uh, Iron and, uh, or Irony and Agony. Okay. That was in 2008, so it's already been uh, a full decade since I've kind of, yeah, that's crazy. uh, given yeah. them a listen. So, now, yeah, so- it was ex- Excited to check out uh, their new. Yeah, new I was going to say. To be fair, I mean, the last uh, Alkaline Trio album that I bought would have been Good Morning, which I don't even. That was early two thousands that came out. Um, yeah. I was I was big into them for From Here to Infirmary and Good Morning. Those two albums specifically, uh, I listened to a ton. And then, I mean, as with other bands, I don't know exactly what happened where I kind of got away from them. They were just. They weren't on my radar for a little while. Like I'd see, you know, new releases pop up here and there, but I hadn't really given a new release a listen really since Good Morning. So this is, um, you know, kind of the first time in a long time uh, that I've listened to an Alkaline Trio album from start to finish that wasn't, you know, one of those earlier ones. So uh, yeah, it was, I mean, my, my initial thoughts, it was a lot of fun. I was, I was, I was, you know, more than more than willing to give this album more than one listen. So um, what were kind of your initial thoughts on the record? Yeah, so there's a few. Um, so I guess with, with Matt being in Blink-182 as well now, mm-hmm. um, so I've listened to California a lot over the last couple of years. Right. So it definitely kind of took my brain a while to kind of say, like, okay, this isn't Blink. This, you know, <laughs> obviously, you know, I guess when, when uh, one band guy joins another band, you know, you kind of associate, you know, the vocals with that. Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, it's, so I guess that maybe tampered a bit with, with my thoughts on the album because I love, I love the album California, and I love Matt on that, and so it. Uh, you know, there was definitely times where I was like, oh, you know, like, when's Mark going to come in or when, <laughs> when are the vocals going to switch up? And, yeah. Um, but, yeah, overall, I really enjoyed to listen. Um, Matt writes really great choruses, and right. I thought there was a lot of really good ones on this album. Uh, I didn't really find myself, you know, getting tired of it. The songs are short enough and, yeah, yeah. and kind of to the point, and 
Um, it's yeah, it's yeah. I was yeah, gonna say no, no. As I say, it's interesting because as far as you know, kind of that uh, you're relating Matt to his work now in Blink. Um, I really found like I, I like Matt's work in Blink. Like I, I, California is a is, is a good enough album, um, but I, I really found as soon as I put this on, I was kind of like, oh, Matt sounds like he's at home again for me. Like just mm. his work with Dan uh, and. To be honest, Dan Andriano has always had a voice that I I really really liked because it's very unique. Like first of all, I mean he's he's got a lisp, so that's kind of always something that <laughs> stood out to me. And and I, I like it kind of. I think when when I can hear a vocalist and they have something very distinct about their vocals. Um, yeah. So he always had, but then just like the the tone of his voice, the timbre of his voice. I don't know the right you know kind of wording for that, but has always. I've always really enjoyed it. And so hearing Matt with him again, I was kind of like, oh, right. This is, you know, this is when I fell in love with Matt's vocals because it's interesting because back in the day, listening to those older albums, uh, I was always, I mean, I liked Dan's voice, but I always felt like I, Matt was the stronger of the two. But on this album, I'm finding myself drawn, I think, more into Dan's vocal work and his bass work too on this record. Uh, it's kind of what, set it apart for me i think uh, i don't know what exactly but it was just what i was finding myself kind of drawn back to with each listen yeah is there songs that dan does lead vocals on or it's just the harmonies no he does he does lead vocals on a number of songs like so is this thing cursed he sings lead on uh little help he sings lead on um okay. yeah and then um oh what's the song called the song where he goes uh um there's no there's no winning this race. Is that I can't remember how the lyrics go off the top of my head, but mm. uh, so there are a number of songs that yeah he sings lead on, and then there's a song in there too where he comes in and he has the bridge. Uh, they do. I, I feel like it's a fairly even trade. I mean, Matt m probably maybe sings lead on more of the songs, but it's not. It doesn't feel as pronounced as it used to, where you know like yeah. Matt was kind of like for sure the main guy, and then Dan would take the odd song here or there, but. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's he he definitely sings lead on on a number of songs on this record. So uh, well, I mean, that makes me want to go back and listen. <laughs> I, so I for sure, oh. up on that enough, and maybe the, they're just kind of in the same range that you they know, yeah really notice that they are similar. So pale blue ribbon was the other one I was trying to think of for sure that he sings lead on. Um, but uh, yeah, so his voice is always same with I, I find he's got a similar thing going on as uh, Davy from the Promise Ring. Were you ever a Promise Ring fan? No, that was a little yeah. in the emo section yeah, that's, for me. That's fair. But so like Davey, he also kind of had, had a, like a bit of a lisp sort of thing going on. And it was just something that stood out that I was like, oh, I kind of I kind of like this. It's different, obviously, than what a lot of other people are doing. But um, so did you have any kind of standout tracks or moments on the album that you that you were kind of like found yourself coming back to? Yeah, yeah, like I mentioned before, like Matt does great choruses, and I found right. that on a number of the songs that it was the chorus that kind of made the song for me. Like, you know, the verse would kind of be okay, you know, maybe, you know, your standard alkaline trio verse, yeah. and then the chorus would come in and be like, okay, like I want to go back and listen listen to those songs. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Blackbird, I, I really like the chorus mm -hmm. in that one. Um, Demon and Division, I have that, you know, the chorus made that song for me as well. Um, yeah, one of my favorite songs was a Goodbye Fire Islands kind of okay. towards the end of the album. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just love the guitar progression in it and, uh, in the intro and has a great chorus and, um, sure. yeah, I really, really like that one. It's, it's interesting to me because, so on, on this album, um, first off, there's a lyric on Blackbird that, uh, kind of makes you kind of like shake my head a little bit i suppose or kind of be like what uh the the first lyric in the song blackbird she's black and red and built just like a spy plane <laughs> and so like i'm assuming i'm not entirely sure what the song is about but like looking at the lyrics but i mean he's using all these like cold war you know like sort mm. of spy metaphors yeah but it seems like it's kind of about like a, a, at first glance to me was about you know like a girl but then I was like using the term built like a spy plane that's kind of I've never heard someone described like that so I'm going to assume I'm very wrong with what my interpretation of that song is but so when I first hear that line every time I'm kind of like what but that that song is neat because 
I feel like it has this very Cold War spy vibe, not just lyrically, but they fit it with you know, kind of whether it's the bass work or the melody he's singing, like mm. it, it feels sneaky almost, if that makes sense on the verses. Um, but so the, the the songs that you sort of mentioned, like Blackbird, Demon and Division, then Goodbye Fire Island, uh, those all kind of surround for me what's the sweet spot of the album. Like mm. when when Little Help comes on, I just think like it's a very repetitive song, but I really like it and it's super upbeat and whatever. So like little help into I Can't Believe, which you talk about those choruses, the chorus on I Can't Believe, when it first played through, I was kind of like, it was an unassuming song. And then at the end of the song, uh, Matt repeats the chorus, but just over top of an acoustic guitar. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, what is? And so I immediately went back to the beginning of the song and it's been one that stuck with me. And Sweet Vampires. Now, here's a question for you. And maybe you didn't notice it, but as a drummer... Uh, I'm not a drummer, so maybe it's just me being like, whatever. But um, on Sweet Vampires, it was the drums that drew me in. They're super simple. And maybe, again, maybe I don't know if it's something that you noticed or not, but do they kind of like go in and out of like syncopation or whatever the case may be? Like it's, I don't know if you picked up, but it does something kind of weird in the verses where it switches things for about maybe a bar, and then goes back. Each verse it does it. I don't know if you noticed it, but it was something that really stood out to me that I was kind of like, oh, you know, Derek Grant is a, is a, is a good drummer. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, yeah, he definitely, <laughs> you know, like it's, it's you know, he, he keeps it simple, but mm-hmm. yeah, I found there was quite a few parts on the albums where it stood out just enough to kind of accent a song, yeah. that, you know, take away from it. Um, yeah, I didn't specifically, um, yeah, remember the drums on that song. I actually had on, on I Can't Believe that I had a cool intro with drums. Yeah. Um, there was a few other songs where, where the drums definitely stood out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like for a band like this, I find that if drums just kind of keep things going instead of, you know, being too distracting, yeah. you know, with a three piece band and, and not a lot of lead guitar parts that, uh, you know, it doesn't take much for the drums to kind of really add to the song. And so I thought he did a good job with that on this album. Yeah, and I think, like, Derek, as a drummer, um, you know, like, he, he's a solid, like, punk rock drummer, at least in the in the work that he does that, I, that I'm familiar with. I'm sure he's obviously capable of playing other styles of music. But, I mean, what he does within the, the box, within the realms of Alkaline Trio, punk rock sort of stuff is very straightforward. Um Whereas I'd I'd be interested to hear, you know, kind of Matt's insight on playing with a drummer like Derek versus playing with a tr- with a drummer like Travis Barker, because yeah, for I sure. mean Travis is obviously he's in kind of a you know a, a realm of his own, I guess you could say, with what he does um, with with his beats, just being you know like he was you know kind of one of those earlier drummers to kind of introduce a little more hip hop flair into his you know, into pop punk music type stuff. Um, but he's a lot busier in general. And so I'd be interested, you know, to hear Matt being, you know, to talk about playing alongside two kind of like stylistically different drummers, but both very strong in their own right. Yeah. Oh man. I feel like that'd be so confusing coming into a band <laughs> like that. It's so different. And, but you know, you mentioned before how Matt or, you know, feels like they're kind of, he's at home, in this album, yeah. and I'm getting things like that kind of kind of add to that. You know, he's gotten all these songs written for the album, and you know, the drums, you know, just kind of kind of play their part really well. And he probably you know doesn't have to get the drummer to you know come up with a bunch of crazy parts. And so yeah, I feel like it, it fits really well with the album. You know, back to drums and just kind of the whole feel of whole feel of it with the songs that are simple. It would seem out of place to have more technical drum parts and. Yeah. So yeah, so I'd definitely be interested to kind of hear what his thoughts are on that. Yeah, it, it'd be it'd be neat for sure. Or or to hear like those drummers swap bands for you know two songs or something, <laughs> just to see like adding their own you know flair. Um, I, I here's something. So I don't know if you had an opportunity uh, to read this, but I think I, I read it the day the record came out. But Kerrang released an interview with um, with Matt, and uh, he he ranked his albums the Alkaline Trio albums, from first to last. And the first album that he, like what he has at number one is this record, is this thing cursed. And Mm. so, I mean, I I would not go out of my way to say that by any means. And I was kind of a little, I don't know what you think about that, but kind of a little like, not 
I mean, not confused, but like, I, I think I commented on one thing. I was like, well, I just kind of ignored this, you know, this, this article because he like lists this album as his best record. Now, um, I, I think it's obvious it's not Alkaline Trio's best record. It is dang good though. Like I will say that, yeah. like I, I was actually surprised by how good it is. But what would you say as as a musician? Do you fall under and believe that you know your latest stuff? You always think it's your best. Yeah, you know, I guess a lot of times because it's what you've just worked on, and so you know it's fresh in your mind how much time and effort has gone into it. And you know, I think a part of a part of us always wants what we're currently doing to be our best. Yeah. And you know. Like for myself, with with bands I've been listening to for years and years, like very rarely is the new album, you know, do I find it their best because yeah. I don't have as much memories with it, right? Like oh, that's it's fair. just come yeah. out like, how can it be my favorite when I've only listened to it a few times? Yeah. But I know on on the other spectrum, you know, with being in a band with what you're working on, you know, it it's what you've just poured into and worked on so hard and so. Yeah, it's kind of a different perspective from the artist versus the listener on that. Well, it was. So, yeah, I guess it's. Yeah. Well, I was going to say it was interesting because I, so I was having a bit of a conversation with some people about it, and uh, one of the guys said, "Well, you know, as as a songwriter, you should always think that your you know your latest creation is your best." But then it's funny because when you when you look at Matt's ranking of the albums, he goes and ranks "Is This Thing Cursed" as number one, and then immediately number two is their debut album. So I'm like, it kind of mm. throws that out the window if you're saying, well, he should know. Like, I understand the idea of progressing and getting better, right? Like that makes yeah. that makes sense. But you're, you know, just sometimes it doesn't come together that way as far as song quality. So I'd be interested because I guess he also did a similar thing with Noisy, but not a, like I understand him, you know, saying, "Is this thing cursed?" Is our best record because this article is designed to. I mean, to promote the new album, right? Yeah. He's not going to be like, Matt, sit somewhere in the middle. <laughs> but at the same point, I'm kind of like, you should just leave it off the list. You know, you should just be like, okay, in light that Alkaline Trio has a new record coming out, we talked to Matt, he ranked their past library in order. This is blah, 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 right? But I, I, I want to go through, I just noticed that he did the same thing with Noisy. Um, I don't know when it was done. Back when they were doing, uh, d they were playing like all of their albums front to back live. Uh, at a series of shows in Chicago. And so it kind of in like in celebration of that or whatever, they did a, a list thing again. So I wonder if it's actually the same or if that's even changed over the years, how he ranks mm. his albums. But um, yeah, so let's, let's get down to, I guess the business of this record. It's got 13 tracks on it. Uh, what do you give? Is this thing cursed out of 13? Uh, I'll give it an eight. Fair enough. No, it's, it's uh like, it's definitely an album I'll go back to sometime. I don't know if it kind of left me, you know, after four lessons, I didn't necessarily feel like, okay, like, I need a fifth listen right away. But there was definitely enough hooks on it, you know, mm. to uh, to get me coming back eventually. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm probably somewhere, I, I might give it a bit, like, a 9 out of 13. Um, I did, like, I do find that it's super easy to listen to. Um, I also found it interesting that uh, you picked, say, like Goodbye Fire Island as one of your favorite songs on the record, only because for me, that's sort of where the record, not with that song in particular, but that's where, in my mind, the decline kind of starts to the mm -hmm. end of the album. Um, maybe even in Pale Blue Ribbon, Pale Blue Ribbon specifically because it just feels like it, they didn't, they couldn't figure out how to end the song and it just yeah. ends and I'm like, oh, that's weird. It is only two minutes. Like, I mean, that's, that's not out of this world for, you know, a punk rock album by any means, obviously. But, um, and so as the record kind of goes on from Goodbye Fire Island, I feel like kind of each song after that attracts me a little and little, like less and less with each, with each, you know, kind of passing song. Crystalline's a fine closer. It's a classic, you know, get to the last song on the album, got to throw in a slow one or whatever. But all in all, I think I would give it a nine. It de it, it definitely reminds me a little bit of, you know, like from here to infirmary um, at, at parts. There are some songs where I'm like, oh, this sounds like old Alkaline Trio and then other parts where it sounds like Alkaline Trio but still new. Uh, yeah. I know this is what I would say. It's been, I think, what, five years or so since their last record? Um, 
that uh, I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, 2013, My Shame is True was the last record. So five mm. years ago. Uh, so, you know, it's a bit of a return, I guess. I mean, I don't know how, maybe not. I don't know how long of breaks they had in between albums before that. But it is one of those ones where I've seen bands, like even Blink-182's California or, I mean, we talked about the self-titled MXPX album on the show. Stuff like that where bands came back and I was kind of like, it's fine. But I don't know, whereas this actually still feels like it's keeping pace with what I remember Alkaline Trio sounding like. So yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that's a bonus for sure in the record. But um, So out of 26, looks like we're going to give it a 17, which, I mean, I think that's that's pretty fair. That's that's a pretty good effort. It's definitely not their best record. So I'm sorry, Matt Skiba, but even if you think it's your best, <laughs> it's not your best. Um, but it is still quite good, I think. Uh, it was very refreshing. So, uh, yeah. But, uh, Aaron, thanks for... Thanks for uh, you, you had to shuffle some stuff at work to be able to do this because I know my schedule's pretty. I'm, I'm not very flexible, <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for hanging out and doing this. And maybe we can uh, we'll do this with another record. Yeah, no, I love that. I love love getting to talk about music and someone else who's passionate about it. And love the podcast, so it's an honor to be on it. <laughs> 